Well, welcome back to Steve Rob Reviews. Today, I'm going to take you along with a really, I think, a neat experiment with a power inverter. I've got a new one. That's it right there. I'm going to show you that inverter. And it is just, guys, this is the bomb of the inverter if you ever want to get one. It's an industrial unit, and it's made by uh, Trip Light. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that name before. But these inverters go in boats, RVs, uh, ambulances and they're made to run so that you can either have like in a boat uh, shore power or you can have solar power or uh, you know you can have it run off of your batteries and it will detect which source is being used and turn that source on the most efficient way so I, uh, I did contact the manufacturer and I asked them how much power does this use in amperage per hour when it's turned on and there's no load applied and they said it should read under one amp so I'll look forward in the future of testing this all but I've mocked up an experimental stand uh, I don't recommend any of you do this kind of stuff because you know you could get hurt and it's not to code this is only for my purposes only for experimenting with this inverter I'd like to get my cabin completely off grid completely and not have to use my inverter, uh, I'm sorry, my uh, generator and only use the inverter. But for now, I'm just going to take one branch circuit that I have at my cabin and I'm going to try it with that and I'm going to try a fridge. I'll explain the fridge later, but uh, I'll show you the inverter and I'll show you some neat features of the inverter. Well, here's the inverter on my bench here. And guys, this thing weighs like over 40 pounds. It is just incredible how heavy and heavy duty it is. It's not just an inverter. It also charges your batteries. And it does it all automatically. Now, I'm not going to use the charge feature for now because I don't really require it. i got to get a lot more set up. And there's a lot of wiring to this. And I'm doing my best, but there is a cover that goes over here, and there is a cover that covers the uh, the two main lugs for your uh, battery cables coming into it. So let's take a closer look at this. Well, I've got you pretty well zoomed in here, and it's pretty basic. There's actually nothing in the front of this except a ground lug uh, to put your chassis if it's going in a vehicle. But on the back here, here's your exhaust fan. When it's under load, this fan will go on. And here's the uh, negative post. Here's the positive post for your battery cables. Very easy to hook up. I just put a little door on here. You know, just tape and a piece of metal and that's it. And in here is where your reset breakers are. And up here, there's two sets of uh, dip switches. And what I did is I only had to turn one of them switches off so that the uh, charge part is not working. And it does come with monitor uh, lights on both sides. And of course, I'll be in the cabin. I can't see any of this stuff. But it does come with this cable insert here. And you can remote up to 50 feet away, operate this as if you were standing out in front of it, which I thought is incredible. And I haven't looked into that too much so far. And of course, there's a switch here. You can turn the inverter on and off when it's not being used so it doesn't draw power from your uh, battery bank. So this is pretty basic here, and you got two sets of uh, uh, leads coming in. I blocked this one off here because I'm not having any power going into it, just power coming out. So all I've got is a ground out, a hot out, and a neutral out. Now, there is another little small panel along the side here that's been covered up, and that's for remote for your uh, to turn your generator off and on if your generator is accepting that. And guys, this is very a complex unit and you have to do a lot of studying on it. And so far, I'm just going to use the basic function of the inverter and it will provide 2,000 watts and up to 4,000 watts peak. And that's with a, you know, a startup load. So let me show you the stand that I built for it and I'll try to explain what I'm trying to do. Well, here's the little stand that I have here that I've made. I've mocked this up to be almost duplicate of what I have in there now. And what I have now 
is I got a small little 400 watt inverter here and from the 400 watt inverter I have two uh, male plugs that go into the inverter and then go into my wall socket to provide power only for my inverter power for one wall outlet. So what I've done is try to duplicate it as much as possible, make it easy so when I go up there I can wire this all up fast. Again, I've got these two receptacles here so the two out of the wall will come over and just plug in there. The wire will go along here and plug into the inverter right there and then I have my two battery cables here that will plug into that stud and that stud so it's pretty easy and what I've done here is put in a 300 DC amp manual breaker and there's a reason why I'm doing that because every inverter I've ever had before has capacitors in there so when you try and hook it up you're going to get a spark I don't like no spark stuff and 300 amps is just under I'd say around 2700 watts around 2800 watts uh, so that should be no problem for the inverter so I can get that peak load you know for starting up a device that, that actually peaks that high so there she is there and of course the cables drop off to the end there and I got the ends on there that will attach to my two uh, batteries with 5 16 studs on the top and I'll hook that up and uh, it should work out fine so that's the rig right there and a lot of people are wondering about 300 amps well in the uh, garage I have a 150 amp on my breaker there and uh, that's about uh, 1800 watts yeah sometimes if I uh, plug in my leaf blower and I have anything else on she'll trip it so you know this here should work out fine plus I can turn it off the way it is now and there's the on but I can turn it off and hook up my wires I don't have to worry about sparks and I think it's a lot safer way to go like I say this is just experimental for me right now and I'm going to take you up to the cabin in the future and show you how this is all set up and we'll see but let's talk a little bit about the fridge I ordered okay so let's talk a little bit about this fridge I ordered a fridge from Costco I searched around for a long time to find a fridge I wanted a small mini fridge this is only like a couple of cubic feet and it has a small freezer in the top it had to be a manual defrost if you go with anything else semi defrost or fully automatic defrost it just burns way too many amps so what you do is you have to take a look at your energy star rating on this particular one it was 218 kilowatts a year now these are tested and they're rough figures but roughly that's what it's going to burn in a year and that's 218,000 watts so you take the 218,000 divide it by 365 and that's going to be about 600 watts a day this is going to burn now 600 watts a day is roughly 25 watts an hour or roughly 2 amps at 12.6 volts and I think I can run this fridge including the inverter the inverters I, I'm putting down the inverter as one amp an hour I think I can run the whole system including the fridge for about three amps an hour now that's 72 amps a day but remember when you know it's daylight hours the system is charging and I can get over 20 amps off my solar panels so I suspect that the fridge will be running just strictly off the solar panel from daylight to dusk and then I'll be using the battery bank for the dark hours now of course when you have a cloudy situation I don't know I'm not that familiar with these panels yet uh, but I'm sure I can get at least like even on a cloudy day probably three amps no problem off them panels and I think I can run this fridge now this fridge was under two hundred dollars compared to you going and buy one of these energy efficient you know like uh, DC fridges that you see and you're going to spend way over a thousand dollars or close to it and they kind of look like a glorified uh, camping cooler kind of thing I wanted a regular fridge I don't need a big fridge I just wanted a small little freezer you know like this not very big and I believe the well I'll show you the fridge when uh, when it comes in 
and I'll do the second part of this when I get up there. And uh, yeah, this is uh, an experiment on my part. I believe I can run a $200 fridge no problem off of this and save the expense of getting one of them DC fridges that are really, really, really efficient. While I think I have more capacity on my system, I don't need to go with that efficient. Now I have heard some people say, oh you need a pure sine wave inverter. This is not. This is a modified sine wave. But this isn't, this isn't like some wing wang uh, inverter. This is a very expensive inverter. And you know, so the modified sine wave, I've had it before and I've experienced it and I've tried fridges off of modified sine wave and they seem to run fine. Uh, you know, there's a lot of truckers out there that have a fridge in their rig and uh, you know, it's modified sine wave. They're not all pure sine wave inverters. The thing is, you can't get a fridge that has all kinds of digital electronics on it. You know, and most small little uh, mini bar fridges, well, they just don't, most of them. But you can get some, but that's why you got to be careful what kind of fridge you get. And I looked at fridges from, the lowest I got was 218,000 watts burn for the whole year. And some were up to about 300 and I believe 20. So that's a huge swing. So if I can get this fridge to run off of two amps an hour, I'd be happy. I'm going to bring all my testing equipment up north and we're going to try it. I'm going to see what kind of results we get. And I think it's going to work. Now I don't know how many people are interested in this kind of thing, but uh, you know what? I think you can run a regular bar fridge off an inverter, a half decent inverter, and save the expense of uh, purchasing like a thousand dollar or more you know, super efficient uh, fridge or going propane like a lot of remote places. A buddy of mine, he has a camp down the road for me and he's got a propane fridge. Try and buy a propane fridge and uh, they're expensive. Even a small one like out of a, you know, like a camping trailer and that kind of stuff. You go buy brand new, you're talking thousand dollars or more. Easy. And then you got to have a propane tank and you got to get them filled and you know, a friend of mine that starts up his propane fridge takes six hours before it gets cold. Electric fridge won't do that. Now I know this is uh, going to provide the uh, power for my uh, electric fridge, 120 volts. And how long is it going to take before it get cold? Well, you guys all had your hydro go off in your house before and I would say under an hour it, it, it's back up and running and you know this kind of stuff. You don't got to wait like six hours like a propane fridge does. And a lot of people don't want to leave their fridge on all summer long when they're not there all the time. So they turn it off and when they get there, they turn it on and you know what? It's expensive with propane too. So, well, I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a video on me trying to explain this experiment. Like I say, don't try to copy any of the stuff that I'm doing because you may get hurt. This is an experiment on my part and uh, I am not a qualified electrician. I'm far from it. And I'd be interested in hearing any comments on uh, anything that you've seen here that maybe just don't look right because you know what? I like to, you know, take the best advice from the smartest people I have on YouTube. And I've got some really sharp guys on my channel that are electricians and uh, electrical engineers. And they know a lot more stuff about this than I do. And I always like to get their tips because you know what? We're all learning together, eh? So thanks for joining me here today and if you haven't seen this channel before you're welcome to subscribe and I'm going to have a part two to this when we're up at the cabin in Northern Ontario and we're going to get all the results. Cheers.